Okay, so we're on problem number eight. I believe number eight's the last question. Let me just see about that. It's a tough one. And, and certainly all the work that goes into it, it's a lot of work. You just see the blue how much work goes into it. What I want to get to, though, is that um, using tools, right? So I've talked about using Sage. I've talked about using Grapher. Now I want to go to the web. And that's something that I think most people have access to is uh, the web. And let me do that. And I'm going to open up Safari. Use any browser you like. I'm going to Wolfram and Wolfram Alpha. All right. It's a great place to go. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to type that in. I'm going to type in plot, P-L-O-T, X to the fourth. You know what? I'm going to write down Y equals X to the fourth power. It's a fourth degree polynomial. I'm expecting to see a general shape of it. Four x cubed plus two x squared minus six x minus seven. And it's gonna give me the little blinky lights. One thing I like about Wolfram, it, it actually typesets it for me. And make sure I put the right thing in. Now I'm not a paying customer. So what I notice over here, and again, I, I want to make sure you, I, I'm going to pull this over here a little bit, but I'm going to go back to this. And I, I put a lot of work down for you to read through. And I, I, I certainly use the intermediate value theorem and things like that. But I, I want to look at the graph of it and look at the graph of this over here. You know, roughly speaking, they look very similar. I mean, you look at this one, look at this one over here. S something they do, and by the way, I'm not sure why they do it, but they kind of zoom out. And this region over here gets very flat. And you could expect that if you zoom out. Just look at the scale over here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to blow the screen up a little bit for you. And you can see the scale here, you know, 400,000, whereas this is going up to 10. You could imagine things being flattened out. And that's where people get deceived. They look at this and say, oh, yeah, it's flat there. No, it's wavy. You can see that right there. All right? Now, other things you could do with, um, with Wolfram Alpha mm -hmm is um, you could ask it for the roots. So I could say solve this thing for zero. Whoops, I made a mistake there. And I, I, I'm i pretty comfortable this is going to be able to do it quite easily. By the way, so can Sage and so can uh, a grapher. Sage is pretty powerful, though. All right, it gives me approximate roots to it. But again, it goes back to a picture. It shows this over here. So what am I seeing? I'm seeing two real roots and two complex roots, all right? So it's not bad to have that. You can also click exact form and more digits. Let's do more digits. Yeah, exact form, remarkable. I really mean that, it's quite remarkable. And it does a nice job of typesetting it. <coughs> Again, I'm not a paid subscriber to this service. But I bet if I were a paid subscriber, they'd allow, they'd, they'd allow me to copy that as a, um, a tech file, which would allow me to typeset it, make it look a lot better than that. Because I'll be honest with you, that looks pretty bad to me, typeset. Right? They got root things, and it just doesn't look right to me. The deal about this over here is that at least it's doing it. It's, it's doing a nice job of doing it as well. But it's tough. Fourth degree polynomials, in general, are tough. They really are tough. Fifth degree is you know, nearly impossible. Here's the deal, though. A lot of information is given to us, including information that might be not well understood at this point, and that's a problem. An overwhelming amount of information. Also, some are roots, product roots, things like this, stuff that's been discussed throughout the text. Let me go back to the notes, though. And the notes, you know, I'm seeing those two real roots, and there's two complex roots, of course. Um, you can just imagine how much work goes into that. I'm just going to count the page count. That's about a quarter page, one and a quarter now. Two and a quarter. With the graph, about two and a half pages of work. All right? So, again, I want to read this ending to you. It says, certainly Wells employed computers, although not digital. Again, computers back then were people in doing these problems. Computers weren't always electronic. At one time, they were human. It's true. They were actually called computers. Human computers were employed to do what some refer to as the tedium of mathematics. 
Who's doing the tedium now? Computers are. They really are. And computers are very useful. And the computers back then were generally people with special talents, right? They were just incredible uh, at, at being able to compute. Uh, these human talents are no longer needed. And I mean that a lot of talents at one time were quite valuable. And then all of a sudden they become valueless. All right? What, what happens? We find something cheaper to do it. All right? And that's, that's a critical point. That's one of the big fears with artificial intelligence, that it will take over our ability, um, that, that our own abilities at, at, at intelligence. But anyway, humans are nowhere near as good as a digital computer. They just aren't, they're not good at it. They're just not good at computing, all right, in general. However, the people that coded the computer must have been very good at algebra. Otherwise, they could not have coded that stuff. Coding that stuff was not trivial. It is not thuggish either. They knew about all the material that we're talking about. Of course, the algorithms they're using, I'm not aware of it. If you go to Wolfram, you're not going to be made aware of it because it's closed source. If you go to Sage, though, you can actually look at the open source. You can actually see what they're doing if you're interested. It's beyond my skill level, though. Anyway, thanks for paying attention. I do appreciate it.